Hi, everyone. Glad to have you here with us on our Creative Cover Solutions webinar. I'll introduce myself. I'm Maria Del Mar, your host for today, and I'm a member of the KDP University team. I'm joined by other members of our team who will be helping answering your questions throughout the session. Designing a cover file that works for you and your audience can be a unique challenge. What's the difference between a cover for an ebook and a paperback? What is the one thing you need to know from the experts? What's the best software to use? Live text, margins, spine text. What does it all mean? Well, that's why you're here today, to get some advice on where to start creating your cover and how to make sure your cover file works with KDP. Okay. I'll share with you today's agenda. In today's webinar, we're going to talk about why it is important to have a quality cover file, discuss the basic layout of both an ebook and a paperback cover file, talk about the KDP cover file specifications and the tools available to help you determine what this means for you, take a look at some of the softwares available to design and format your cover, and end up with my top 10 tips for making your cover file work with KDP. Having a well-designed cover can help you get the attention of potential readers. I get asked all the time about how to increase the book sales. And the first thing I talk about is the book's cover. The cover of your book is your elevator sales pitch. It's the first thing that will grab your potential reader's attention. It needs to communicate your genre, align with like authors and be unique enough to give you brand recognition. Here we have some examples on different genres where you can see the components um, of the books, um, fonts, the style of every, every cover dependent or based on each genre. A quality cover file also shortens the time it takes to publish on KDP. If the cover file is sized correctly, contains the correct elements and the correct bleed, then it is likely to, to publish on the first pass through the quality checks. Because of this, many authors choose to hire a graphic artist to design and format their book cover. We have this publishing service providers and resources available in today's downloadable companion. Another question I'm asked is if there is any difference between traditionally published covers and independently published book covers. And for most of the part, they have the same components. Where they differ is the paperback printing process. So KDP uses an on-demand printing process that includes a variance of 0 0.125 or an eighth of an inch in any direction. Here we added um, centimeters as well, metric, in case you use centimeters and inches. Okay. This means that the cover can shift um, an eighth of an inch in any direction during the printing process. Because of this variance, we discourage the use of borders and hard edges between the front covers and the spines. We also have some limitations on the graphics that we allowed on front covers, things that cannot be substantiated, offensive or controversial material, etc., are not allowed. Illegible text or text that it's cut off, it's also not allowed on covers. So what does a quality cover look like? A quality cover contains high resolution graphics and fonts and all the components your reader expects to find for your genre. Again, here we have some genres. You can check the components, fonts on each genre. So suspense or thriller novels, the first example, We'll often have the title in bold, sans serif fonts, whereas contemporary romance, contemporary romance may have a mix of serif and script fonts for title, and sci-fi or fancy have highly stylized fonts, as you can see the example in here. We could spend the rest of the webinar on making great design choices, but there is a lot more to cover but I do want to give you a little more information about types of fonts so you can have a jumping off point. Fonts are usually classified into three types, serif, sans serif, and script. We will start talking about serif fonts. 
Serif are short lines found at the end of the letters. These short lines that are circled in here. Serif fonts are any font family that have that distinguishing characteristic. Some common serif fonts are Book Antiqua, Garamond, and Times New Roman. Serif fonts are often used for a classic looking cover. Now let's talk about sans serif fonts. Since sans means without, sans serif fonts are any font family that do not have that short lines at the end of the letter form. So you can see in here, they don't contain the short lines. Some common sans serif fonts are book Arial, Calibri, or Helvetica. Sans serif fonts are often used for a modern looking cover. Then let's talk about script fonts. Just like writing, um, handwriting, it's individualized. Script fonts are unique and varied. These are specialized fonts that should be used sparingly, and special attention should be paid to the legibility of the fonts. Because they are often unique, this may be the most problematic if you don't embed them in your file properly. Script fonts are often used for romance or period covers as we saw the, the sci-fi example before. So how do you know what components readers expect to see for your genre? Go to your local or physical bookstore, check out books similar to yours. Actually, you can go um, to an online bookstore as well, to the Amazon website, look at the components they contain, take notes of the book series, See how the book's covers share similar characteristics? This is their brand. A quality cover contains elements that can be repeated so that the end reader begins recognizing your brand. Think of the last series you read or your favorite author. How do you recognize their book's cover? On this series, we can see some components, some elements that, um, that it's a brand, an author's brand. So you can go to the website, as I mentioned, to check on those components to start designing your author's brand. Now that we look at what makes a quality cover file, let's take a look at the elements that make up a cover and the differences between a paperback and an ebook cover. Starting with the front cover, the front cover should have some graphic elements that draws your reader in. This could be an image, stylized text, but whatever it is, it needs to grab your potential reader's attention on search pages, in bookstores, in the hands of other readers. So often new authors or publishers will get stuck trying to make sure all the elements on their front covers are clear, clear in their thumbnails or small pictures that show in search page pages or your Amazon um, page. This is not necessary. You just need one recognizable element that can raise your genre and what makes your book unique. Along with this graphic element, here we point in the graphic element on this example, um, is your title, author name, and sometimes a subtitle or tagline. This front cover will be used for both your ebook and your paperback book and should be designed to meet your KDP paperback specifications first, as it's, it is much easier to create an ebook cover from a paperback cover than it is the reverse. We will talk more about ebook covers in just a moment. For paperback covers, there are two additional components that will wrap around your book the spine and the back cover. And no matter the page count, all paperback books have a spine and back cover. To meet um, KDP specifications, the book must have at least 100 pages or 130 pages if you're using Cover Creator to contain text on the spine, to contain text in here, either the title or the author name on the spine. Spine text is normally comprised of the title, author name and publisher name or logo. This should be clear and is meant to be read when the book is shelved. So you must ensure your book contains at least 100 pages if you're designing your cover, 
using a third party software or hiring a professional, that you must have 100 pages to be allowed to add text here in this point. The back cover can contain a number of elements and is a continuation of the marketing from your front cover. Typically, the back cover will contain a synopsis of your book, often the same synopsis found on the Amazon page, an author photo and biography, endorsements or reviews. Please make sure the reviews um, that you're adding are from someone reputable. The publisher name and logo can often be found on the back cover as well. All of these elements are optional, but you have spent a lot of time writing your book. You want to carry that through the cover, right? The goal is to give your readers more information about why they want to buy your book. Then the last item on the back cover is the barcode, as we can see the example in here. Um, KDP will add a barcode for you, so you won't, you just need to leave the space for it at the bottom near to the spine. I'll share with you additional specifications on barcodes in case you want KDP to add the barcode. You just need the uh, you just need to leave the space. If you would like to add your own barcode, you can you can do it. Here we have the dimensions in inches, and if you use metric centimeters next to the inches, uh, you just need to make sure it's two by 1.5 inches, high resolution, 100% black on a white background. So the barcode must be black on a white barcode. Position point 375 inches from the bottom and 0.25 from the spine. So 0.375 from here and from the spine, 0.25 inches. And during your title setup, when you upload your completed cover file, click on the box next to the phrase, check this box see if, if the cover you're uploading contains a barcode. In here, if you if your cover contains a barcode, you need to check the box. If you want KDP to add the barcode, then you need to leave this um, blank without the without the mark. If you're using Cover Creator, you don't have the option to use your own barcode, so you will need to leave the space on the back cover for KDP to add one. This specifications can be found on the KDP help pages, and a link is included in today's downloadable companion. Since you're able to adjust the price on your book, KDP will not add a price to the barcode. And as a best practice, we always suggest to leave it a, to leave it blank without any pricing, because this will limit you to update the cover. You will need to to update the pricing every time you change it on the back cover. So um, yeah, we don't suggest adding a price on your barcode. Since we're discussing what goes on your cover, now it might be a good time to discuss what doesn't go on the cover. There is some restriction on what it is allowed to put on covers. As we mentioned earlier, Amazon doesn't um, endorse um, offensive or controversial material, especially content or symbols that promote, incite or glorify violence, intolerance or hate. Eligible, or blurry text, text that it's cut off, also unsubstantiated claims, such as number one bestseller, CD or DVD included, cannot be added to the cover. So this is what doesn't go on covers. We have a policy on our help pages, in case you would like to take a look as well. Be careful with anything that could be confused for another book like companions, guides, or summaries. This needs to be clearly marked as such and have unique cover designs and also should not list the original author as a contributor. And if this is a book in a series, make sure you have the correct series number it makes perfect sense to create a template when you're writing a series to, to create that brand as well. But just remember to update all the cover content for each book in the series. So what is the difference between ebooks and paperbacks? 
and should you design one first? The answer is that it is easier to design the paperback cover first and then trim that cover down to use that for your ebook. Even if you're not sure you want to publish a paperback at this time, you may want to consider creating your paperback cover regardless, just in case. Beside having a front, back, and spine that wraps around the book, a paperback cover must be physically printed. This requires the image to be high resolution, at least 300 DPI and CMYK if possible. Again, 300 DPI and CMYK if possible. Additionally, paperback covers have bleed and margins requirements. So an ebook, on the other hand, should be high resolution, but only needs to be the front cover. As you can see it in here, this will be displayed on digital devices, so you just need the front cover. Um, the ebook cover doesn't have any bleed or margin requirements and displays best in RGB. Um, all of which can be made from the paperback, but it doesn't work well in the reverse. Think of this way. If you want a PBJ sandwich with crust and without, you can make a crustless sandwich by cutting off the crust, but you can't add the crust to the one that has no crust. Next, let's look at how and tag some math. When trying to determine the dimensions of your cover, the help pages will be your best friend. In here, you will, have, you will find all the resources you need to create in that cover. You can find the required dimensions for both ebook and paperback covers on the help pages, and I have the links to this help pages in today's downloadable companion. Let's begin with the ebook dimensions. The ideal size of your ebook cover art is a height. Well, here I added the ideal size a height width ratio of 1.6 by 1. This means that for every 1,000 pixels in width, the image should be 1,600 pixels in height. To ensure the best quality for your image, particularly on high-definition devices, the height of the image should be at least 2,500 pixels. And here we have the ideal dimensions for ebook covers. So the ideal dimensions for the cover file are 2,560 by 1,600 pixels. This is something um, you may want to note, the maximum size and minimum size. The minimum image size allowed is 1,000 by 625 pixels, and the maximum image size allowed is 10,000 uh, by 10,000 pixels. The system will allow you to upload a larger file, a larger file than this dimensions. However, the image will not appear on your Amazon Books detail page. So you need to ensure this is the maximum image size you will have on your cover. When you're sizing your ebook cover file, make sure you begin with a high resolution image and size down. This will ensure a clear image. Make sure your height and width measurements are constrained as well. This will eliminate any unintended distortion. If you are using Adobe Photoshop, you can check your image size by going to the Image tab, selecting Image Size, and looking at the width and height measurements at the top under Pixel Dimensions, Width and Height. Here you can check those dimensions. Now, a paperback cover is a bit more complicated since there are more components. In this image, you can see that we have the front cover, spine, and back cover on a single file. The front cover and back cover measurements will be the trim size of your book. In this case, we will use the most popular trim size, 6 by 9 inches. I will show additional measurements um, in the following slides. So uh, next to the inches, we have the centimeters. Then we have the spine. The spine height is based on your trim size, but the width is determined by two things, the page count and the paper type. We will say that this book is black ink on white paper with two 
um, with 200 pages. So here um, we have the page count and that the, the number we will need to use based on my paper choice. Black ink on white paper, black ink on cream paper, color ink on white paper. So as I said, I'll use black ink on white paper. This is the number that I will need to use. Um, so I need to multiply 200 pages, 200 times this number, 0 0.002252. Remember, you can find these measurements on the KDP help pages, and this will give me a total spine width of 0 0.5 inches. This would be the spine width, and the height would be the same as the trim size. Once I have all three width measurements for my front, back, and spine, I have the basic dimensions of my paperback book cover. So in this case, my cover is 12.5 by 9. 12.5 by 9. 6 inches for the front cover, 6 for the back, and 0 0.5 for the um, spine. This is called the bleat. Without this extra image, there may be issues when the book is printed and trimmed to the final size. I need to add 0 0.125 inches to all the sides to accommodate the bleat. And this takes the final dimensions of my book to 12.75 by 9.25 inches. So remember, 0 0.125, you will need to add this to all the sides of your cover. Now that I have the final dimensions, I need a couple more measurements. I need to make sure that my image and text stays in the correct areas of my cover. My spine text on the spine, my front cover text on the front cover, back cover text on the back cover. So I need to add margins. This is just like when you're typing in your word processing software and it moves you to the next line. So it doesn't run off the page. Is the same thing, by, but we need to manually add it. This is called your margins. The margins around the outside of your book is 0.25 inches from the edge of the final dimensions that include your bleat. So um, 0.25 inches from the outside margin. And on both sides of your spine, there is a 0 0.0625 inches margin, so your spine text stays on your spine. 0 0.0625 inches from the spine. Now, um, we know, <laughs> we really know math is hard, but we created some tools to make it easier for you. In our help pages, we have a calculator, a paperback cover calculator to gather those those dimensions. The first tool we have is a calculator that will calculate all the paperback dimensions that we just figure it out in our heads or using your computer calculator because there is no way I can multiply 200 pages times the number we figure it out in my head. So you can download that calculator for, for the help pages by clicking the track or calculator link in here, try, try our calculator, which will take you to a page with the option to download the paperback file setup calculator by clicking the yellow download calculator button. This will download an Excel template to your desktop. So in here, the, this yellow button will upload a template to your desktop. And to use the Excel doc, click on the yellow enable button at the top to make sure um, the size is correct, it is important to choose the ink and paper choice that matches your interior. Choose your trim size and enter your page count and then click on the cover. And this will take you to a page with all the measurements you need to determine the dimensions of your paperback. So in here, you have the paper choice. This is how the calculator looks like, the paper choice, the trim size, and the, the amount of pages. You click on cover and this will provide you with all the dimensions. If you're unable to download the calculator or 
um, you prefer templates, we have those ones as well. Start by selecting your trim size from the drop down menu in here, the trim size of your book. Then you will need to select the, you will need to enter the page count and select the paper choice. This will download a zip file to your computer. Open the zip folder, which will contain two files, a PDF and a PNG. Select the file that works best with your software. And I do want to call out a couple limitations with the templates. The templates are built in 10 page increments. This means if your page count is at the top or bottom end of the page increment, there may be a discrepancy in the spine text and the spine margins. And if you change your page count after you design your cover, you may need to download a new template. Given all this information, I'm frequently asked what my top suggestions with covers is or what software do I suggest? If you haven't attended any of my webinars, you already know the answer. There is no one size fits all solutions. So I'm going to break down what I see as some of the top cover solutions by cost and effort. But before I do that, I just want to call out that we are including these service providers for informational purposes only. Amazon doesn't endorse or sponsor any service provider nor recommend one over another. This information is to help you find what works best for you. Potentially, the highest cost but lowest effort, and in my mind, well worth it, is hiring a professional. I said potentially the highest cost, cost because I have seen some beautiful work for less than $300. It all depends on the individual you hire. And the benefits of hiring a professional is that they are trained for this work. They already understand the specifications. They know what margins, trim size, trim size and bleed are, but hiring a professional can have a high price if you have, um, if you make significant changes or if you want a highly complicated cover. And this can be minimized by having a clear vision and clearly communicating that vision to your designer. And if you're on a budget, you can always check out your local colleges or universities, see if they have a design program College students are often looking for the opportunity to practice their design skills for their portfolio. So this is something you, you may want to consider as well. Then next is the Adobe Suite or of products. Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign are the software programs used by the most professional graphic artists. The software was built to create both print and digital designs and their help pages are excellent. They have an extensive library of tutorials so you can learn to use the software. You will need to check out their website for pricing plans to fit your needs, but they can be a bit pricey. There is also a steep learning curve in order to use the software, which can take some time out from your busy schedule. So this is potentially the highest cost and highest effort. Next is the KDP Cover Creator. So a Cover Creator is a free tool that you can use to create your cover during the title creation on KDP. You can either upload your own graphics or photos or use the stock photos supplied. The tool contains several templates that you can modify to meet your needs and the tool is simply to use and was built to work with the KDP website. Your design will be limited to templates supplied in the tool, meaning there is a minimal personalization available at, at, at this time. And since the tool is free, this is one of our lowest cost solutions, but you still need to create a cover. So we will put this a, as a medium low effort. A lower cost, simple solution with a low Learning curve suggested by authors is Canva. Canva is a crowdsourced web-based site that has both free and low cost solutions. There are some templates that work with eBooks or you can learn to create paperback covers without templates. 
Canva is web-based, so you don't need to download or install the software. Since this is, since this is a crowdsource and template-based software, you may see other books using the same or similar templates you will, you will use. We put this at the lower end for cost because it's a free option and medium for effort because the site is intuitive, but if it, it doesn't contain paperback templates at this time. The last software we're going to mention today is that GNU Image Manipulation Program, also known as GIMP. So GIMP is a free open source software. The functionality is similar to other photo editing software, and the software has been around for 20 years. You can design professional looking covers that rival other photo editing softwares. This software is an open source, meaning that it doesn't have a corporation supporting it, so there is no guarantees when you use it. There is a steep learning curve for this software, and you may want to, to be creative when creating your cover and creative when finding these solutions as well to any issues um, since the help for this source, it's crowd. Basically, you will need to Google and YouTube your learning. Because of the interface and the learning curve, we are calling this low cost, but high effort. This is not all the comprehensive list of software or solutions for designing your cover. If you have another software that you prefer, then by all means use that. This is just a list to help you get started. Just make sure whichever software you choose, your cover meets the KDP cover specifications found on the KDP help pages. Before we move into the, the question and answer, no webinar will be completed without a top 10 list. So there is, here is my top 10 tips for creating a cover that works with a KDP website. Number 10, turn off printer's marks. Graphic artists are thought to include printer's marks, crop marks, or color bars in files that are sent to printers. These are used to lay out the file in a larger process for a print run or when more than one copy of a book is produced. These marks are not needed for KDP as your book is printed when, you, uh, when your reader purchases it one at a time. So please ask your graphic designer for those ones who are going to hire someone, ask that artist to turn off those printer marks on the print preferences settings of the software they will use. Number nine, beware of text that bleeds. Um, we're talking about the text that is in danger of being cut off during the printing process. Most text will sit along an imaginary line called the baseline. And, and at the imaginary line called the X height. But text has these centers that fall below the baseline and A centers that extend above the X height and some decorative elements like serifs. So here we can see the A centers, the centers and serifs. This, this, um, this elements can often cause problems when they fall into your margins. So double check and make sure your A centers, the centers and the credit elements are not creating any issue on the spine or the edge of your cover. Number eight, turn off your template layers. If you use a template, remember to remove, to remove or turn off the template layer. No one wants to see the pitch of the template coming through onto their cover. So remember to turn off this layer. Um, then if this layer can be seen, this will fail during the manual review process and this will delay as well the publishing process. So please be, be careful with this layer. Number seven, flatten your file and embed fonts. Drop shadows, unique fonts, 3D images and other decorative elements can cause all sorts of havoc if the file is not flattened. 
raster size, or the fonts embedded. You can usually adjust your print or preference settings to make sure your file is flattened and your fonts are embedded. The help pages for your chosen software will have instructions on how to complete this task. If you choose to use um, Cover Creator, this will be done for you. This is an example of what you see and what the computer sees and the reason why we need you to flatten the file. Number six, no hard edges. As we mentioned earlier, because of our on-demand print module, there may be some shift during the printing process. Remember that variance we, we talk about, the point 0.125 inches on any direction? If you have any hard edge in your design between your front cover and the spine, or the back cover and the spine, or the edge, this may shift during the printing. If you want to include a color change in any of these areas, we suggest using a fade to soften the edge, which will be hiding this shift. Number five, avoid frames. Just like, like with hard edges, frames are impacted by the on-demand on print model, and it is really difficult to center a frame on the cover. Our suggestion, just avoid frames. Number four, make your spine text legible. Remember, your spine text is meant to be read when your book is shelved. Script fonts, specialty fonts, or very small fonts do not work well in spines. If your front cover is the same or similar to the cover image, it may get lost or be illegible, as you can see that in here. Well, actually, I don't think I don't think you can see this, but this can be legible. Um, then remember, you need to have at least 100 pages or 130 if you're using Cover Creator to, to be allowed to add spine text. If you have less, we, we don't allow that because it would be too small. Since there are fonts like the book title in here, which is uh, a sincere font, open sense may be legible even over the busy background. Number three, Barcodes, barcodes must be legible as well. If you're including a barcode, it must be legible. That barcode is a tool that is used in the production facility and each book is scanned to make sure your reader is receiving the book they ordered. If the barcode is low resolution or if there is not enough contrast between the background and the barcode or if there are other graphic elements in the barcode, this will impact the functionality of the barcode. If this happens, um, this will be either digitally replaced or a sticker will be placed over your supplied barcode and no one wants a sticker on their cover. Again, our suggestion is not to add price to your barcode because this will limit you from changing the price or will cause you to change your cover every time you change the price on your book. Number two, print or export as a PDF. There are a lot of PDF producers that are available on the internet, but this do not always produce a PDF that works with KDP. Instead, most softwares allow you to either print or export your PDF, your file as a PDF. So remember to go to your print or preference settings, look for the PDF um, X, as you can see here, PDF, dash X, settings if available, add your final cover size to the page size dropdown, and this choices will flatten your file and choose to embed the fonts. And number one, review in Previewer. Both the ebook and paperback title setup have the opportunity to preview your book. Take the opportunity to look at your book, or better yet, have someone else look at your book. Often our brain tricks us and sees what we think should be there. So it's better if we have someone else to review our work and, and provide some suggestions. Then uh, the print reviewer has the opportunity to turn 
to turn the trim, bleed, and margin lines on and off. That, that way you could look at the cover both with the indicators and without. And that's it, our best suggestions on how to create a cover that works with the KDP website. I really thank you for joining us today for the Creative Cover Solutions webinar. Wish you happy publishing. Bye.